Welcome to the build video for the next FPV N250, or as I call it, the MIDI. My name's 12Hack, and I'm going to run through how I built the uh, N250, and hopefully it'll help you along. So the quad frame comes, as you see here, with all the parts in individual bags. Um, on the back there's you know, specifications and a link to the site where you can view the um, how to build. The parts I've got here, I'll put a link in the description. Um, these are the parts I did the build with, um, just so you've got a reference against these. So let's run through the parts that come with the kit. Um, there's a bag of spares, uh, risers and screws. Um, there's the plastic screws themselves, there's the risers that come with the kit. There's metal screws that screw the arms on. Um, there's some bobbins for the Mobius. There's some spacers. These are plastic spacers that actually go um, onto the screws that hold the arm on. They give a great clearance on the frame. Um, allow plenty of you know, room for wires, ESC wires. Um, also allow for your internal um, ESC mounting as well because it you know, gives plenty of room. Um, the main quad plate um, where everything mounts to, the bottom plate that goes underneath the arms, um, the top plate with all the relevant holes and mounts for, um, for aerials, etc. The uh, Mavis camera mount um, comes as well. Um, six inch arms, um, there also is five inch arms that come in this kit. Um, allows you mount six inch or five inch props, um, both great options all with the one kit. Um, these two little spaces I've been using as uh, LED mounts using clean flight. Um, you can have LED strips run on the back and the front of the quad. And this little fella, that's the camera mount which just about mounts any FPV camera using um, elastic bands as the uh, thing to hold it on. I start the build with the main plate for the quad. Um, so that's this plate here, um, the screws and the risers for the, uh, for the frame as well. So basically I just um, put the screws through, um, pop the risers on and do them fairly fairly tight, finger tight. Um, don't over tighten them because um, you can actually snap the screw if you over tighten. Um, so yeah, just pop them through and screw them onto the, uh, onto the arms. I'll just speed through this section because um, you'll get the idea. We'll also put the risers for the um, flight controller on as well. Um, this frame comfortably fits the NASE or the CC3D flight controller. Okay, now to mount the flight controller. Um, if you look at the board, you notice the markings of the front, the two doubles. That's actually the front of the quad. So you need to keep that in mind when you, you're um, hooking into the flight controller. Now using the NASE32, there's a marker on the flight control, a little arrow that points forward. Um, now traditionally that, that points forward and that's the mount, but the uh, USB is at the back and that's sometimes hard to get to. You can mount the USB to the side, you just need to do, um, do some rotation in the CLI on the, um, in um, clean flight or uh, base flight. Um, but we'll mount it this way for, um, for simplicity, we'll put the, the, front to the, uh, the little arrow to the front of the, the quad and we'll just screw, screw that in at this point in time. So that's the flight controller in, you see there's plenty of clearance to get your cables up through from the bottom of the, uh, the quad, from the ESCs, so yeah, it's a good mount there. So for this build I'm using a power distribution with a 12 volt and a 5 volt feed off it. Um, you can see here that um, looking at the, this way, the, there's a 5 volt up the top here, um, 
that you can feed off a 12 volt which you can tap off the bottom. Um, the negative actually runs on the left hand side of the board here and that's all negative and on the right hand side is a positive. Um, up the top there's 5 volt feed with an adjustable supply. Make sure you put the multimeter on the feed here just to make sure that that is coming out 5 volts because it is adjustable. Um, you can run your flight controller etc off um, that 5 volt feed if required. Um, in my build I won't be but um, yeah that's an option there on this one. So taking the, the board, um, I usually just mount um, the, this power distribution board in with a bit of um, double sided tape. Um, it seems to just hold in okay. Um, certainly the wires of the, um, the frame put enough pressure to, to keep against the tape, uh, stop it moving around. So we'll just whack some tape on that and mount that up. So now to attach the power lead for the battery, um, just being careful of course of polarity when you connect these up. Um, just make sure remember the negatives on the left hand side in our instance and uh, positive on the right. So we'll just line up, make sure our XD60 negative connection is um, actually on the negative side. Of course it's very important not to get this one wrong. So we'll just solder this up. So next to solder on the VBAC connection, this is the um, battery monitor for the NAS. So it needs to run off the same feed as your, your battery. So I'll just solder it onto the same connectors that your battery leads are coming onto. Um, the positive and the negative feed on, remembering the positive being on the right in our instance here. And negative going onto the left. So this mounts onto the, um, the naze board itself. Um, the outer two pins on the, the board near the USB connector are the VBAT, making sure, very important, that the positive, so the red wire, goes to the inside of the board. So just make sure you get that on the outside two pins near the USB with positive on the inside of the board. And you should be good. We also need to solder the um, power cable for the uh, BTX. Um, in this image here, I actually soldered the 12 volt power outlet, but um, later on, put that back onto the um, just the same connection as the batteries. So okay, so for the motors, uh, we'll be using the T Motor 2000 kV. Um, these are excellent little motor, uh, power the quad very well on 3S and 4S. Um, so in the box you've got a couple of different um, prop mount options. There's a direct mount prop um, and the other one, we won't need the direct mount one. Um, we're actually going to use the screw on prop mount. Um, so we've got the motor itself. Um, so we'll just open up these. And the bag comes with um, a couple extra screws actually which is great. And the motor itself. So one thing you've got to um, do is when we put these on, um, when we put these screws in, um, once you get this cone off, um, make sure you get some Loctite into the, um, onto the screws um, before you put it on. And this is a high, um, high vibration, high stress area. Um, pop some Loctite on the screws themselves, put them in, um, and you'll have no issues at all there. So these are the motors mounted to the arms. Um, now depending on what um, speed controller you've got, um, some of the speed controllers will accept these bullet connectors straight in. Um, the ones we've got are ZTW Mantis and they don't actually have the connectors so we're going to cut these off and I'll actually shrink wrap the um, speed controllers directly to the arm and uh, solder them direct to the connection.
So here they are uh, all shrink wrapped um, onto the arm, um, cable running through. So I've just cut the cables and um, there we go. Um, cut the cables so they're actually connected and soldered directly to the speed controllers. Um, it's not a bad fit, it's pretty clean. So at this stage we've soldered all the ESCs on, I've put the little screws and the lock nuts to hold the arms on. Um, you can see that it's a fairly neat finish um, with the spaces in the arms. Um, gives it plenty of clearance for, the, um, for everything to fit in, nice and neat finish. Um, we'll just put the top plate on and um, make sure we tidy up the, uh, the little ESC cables coming through and possibly the little zips and zip ties that should hold it all in. Okay, we'll speed this section up a little bit. Um, this is probably the most time consuming is actually putting the, um, the bottom plate on. So I just sort of um, get everything held in with the arms, make sure my speed controllers are, you know, the right distance out and um, solder everything in. I just loosely put the lock nuts on holding it. Um, once we do that, we get the plate. Um, I take the bolts off. It, it does hold itself reasonably well. The tolerances are pretty good on the screws that go through the arms and the frame. Um, in this, this instance, I, you know, I was able to take the lock nuts off, uh, make sure we put the washers on, then the, uh, the lock nuts afterwards. Um, but if you're having any issues, you can actually lean it onto the side um, during this process. And it's actually you know, probably a lot easier. Um, you don't have any worries of the screws actually dropping back you know, through the frame. Um, yeah, just, just work it gently. Um, and you can pop those, each of those screws through. The spaces are, you know, I missed putting showing the spaces, but they're, they're simply the, um, the screws go through um, you know, the little tubular spaces that onto the, um, the arms themselves. Now, my, because the way I mounted the ESCs on the, um, the top of the arms, I actually mounted the arms on the bottom of the frame here. Um, so you can actually put that the other way. You can actually have the arms that are you know, onto the, uh, the middle plate of the, of the quad um, and put the spaces underneath that and have the ESCs underneath. Um, you can actually even fit the ESCs actually in that room between the, where the spaces are. Um, depending on your ESCs, some, some will fit in there. These possibly could have fit in there as well. Um, but just for simplicity and because I had to solder the, um, the motors on, I put them, put them there as well. Um, so we'll just run through that, um, screw all the screws in, tie them up nice and tight, um, and that's pretty well going to be the, the bottom plate. Fit. So mounting the camera, um, the option in, in the N250 is a elastic band mount option. Um, so this one I've got a, a mini camera here, um, which this, this mount will take just about any you know, size FPV camera. Um, comes with a couple of rubber bands that you know I just do a little figure eight tie. Um, I did later put on some heavier rubber bands just to, to hold it even tighter. Um, I found these were good, but with a smaller uh, camera that you know, a bit extra strength, um, so it helps as well. Um, now, s just make sure you get the camera aligned the right way before you put it in, because otherwise you put everything together and your camera is upside down when you, you watch it. So it's worth worth knowing which way your camera actually uh, you know, aligns, which is the top and bottom. Um, I'll just pop over the um, top. Sorry, I go out of frame a little bit here. Um, I'll just pop over the top, around, loop around the back. I'll come back in a bit in a second. Here we go. Um, and then through the little notch that hold the elastic bands in and then back around you know, the front of the lens of the camera. Um, it's a way I use with other cameras as well. Um, it's a quite a good way. It holds them in. There's lots of other ways you mount it. This is just one way that I found works, um, especially with this, this plate, it works well. Um, but the beauty of it is, um, you know, once, once it's all locked in, I'll just put a cover on it um, so I don't put my fingerprint on it. Um, if you do actually bump into something, 
you don't get this snap of the board or you know snap of the camera or break the camera it actually moves around the side um, just make sure that you know if you get elastic bands lined up properly and covering just a bit off there um, it's actually a very solid mount it doesn't move around much um, it also helps a little bit with vibration but it protects the camera so that's good Okay, so to mount the um, VTX onto the frame, um, I actually use a pigtail um, between the VTX and the aerial. Now the reason I use this is because if there's any bangs or hits on the back of the frame, um, you tend to snap the, the connector off the VTX without a pigtail. This way, if there's any damage, the worst you could do is break the pigtail itself, um, you know, without damaging the VTX. VTX is expensive, so best to protect that. So to screw them together, I usually use a bit of double-sided sticky tape just to hold onto the top of the frame there. Um, it keeps them away. A um, little bit shorter pigtail, maybe a little bit better. Um, this one was a little bit long. Um, they're also available. Um, so that's how we mount the VTX. Um, now the the small little um, FR Sky um, receiver, um, I usually put the front um, in front of the um, the flight controller. Now I just use um, PPM, so I just hook up pin, um, you know, pin signal one off, off one onto the board. Um, I grab the little jumper and I put it up between signal pins three and four. That turns you know, CPPM onto the, the controller. A um, little bit of double-sided tape onto that, um, and that mounts up into the just in front of the uh, the um, controller itself, the flight controller. So that's pretty much all the components in um, and fitted. Um, just some tidy up with the cables there, zip ties, um, maybe pull the cables back down into the bottom of the frame a little bit. Um, it also helps um, keep those in order. Um, that just pops onto the first three pins on the, uh, the flight controller and pretty much play it on. There we go. So I'll just post some pictures here. Um, they're a bit more clearer. Um, the video was a bit dark. It was shot in my man shed. I don't have a studio to do this. Um, but to get a bit more detail out of these ones, and you can see some of the cables before I tidied them up. Um, I actually mount the, um, the receiver aerials in some um, zip ties. You see on the front here, this is the finished build, um, just with a bit of um, shrink tube over the top just to hold them in. Um, it's very versatile, easy. Um, you see the aerial mounted on the back with a pigtail, nice and clean. Um, doesn't get broken that way. Um, these are the 6x4.5 HQ props, brilliant prop on 4S, great on 3S as well. Um, you know, it's a neat frame, it's, it's certainly, you know, it's a great frame to fly and, you know, the, the weight's pretty reasonable as you see coming up here. Um, have fun, build and post any questions you want and I'll see if I can answer them for you. Cheers.